Welcome back to Trinity Bible Study. We've been in John chapter 4 for the last few sessions, and we've seen how Jesus ministered to a Samaritan woman, and how she transformed the community by her words, and they came to Jesus by hearing his words. At the end of our last session, we saw Jesus go to Galilee, and it's there where we'll pick up in John chapter 4, verse 46. Therefore he came again to Canaan of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a royal official whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he had heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and was imploring him to come and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down, my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started off. And as he was now going down, his slaves met him, saying that his son was living. So he inquired of them the hour that he began to get better. And they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives, that he himself believed, and his whole household. This is again a second sign that Jesus performed when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. There is a rich foundation here that we need to apply to our lives as we live by faith. We are confronted daily with threats to our lives, whether they be health threats or whether they be safety threats. Some of these things we don't even perceive. Some of them are very obvious. And we can get our help from one of two ways. We can either trust in what man says and man's techniques, or we can know the Creator through his son Jesus Christ and believe that he can do great things in our lives. This royal nobleman had obviously heard Jesus was coming into Galilee and so he comes to meet him and he says, I need you to come with me. My son is desperately ill. He's going to die any minute. Jesus says, well, what are you looking for a sign or a wonder for? He's saying, what, what, what are you trying to get me to do here? And obviously, this nobleman just doesn't let up. He says, come on, we've got to go. We've got to go. My son's going to die. And Jesus looked at him and he says, go, your son lives. And right there, he put in front of him the difference between seeking some kind of cure and some kind of sign and some kind of miracle or simply believing what Jesus said. And the nobleman chose to believe. It says he believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. He turned around and took off. And while he, and this was a journey that probably took several hours, if not a day or so. And while he's on his way home, his slaves come and meet him. And they say, hey, your son's living. He's doing great. And he says, oh, what time did that start happening? And they told him you know, around the seventh hour. And, you know, he thinks back and he goes, that was about the same time I was talking to Jesus. And that confirmed his belief in what Jesus had said. Jesus didn't say, go home and give him A, B, C, and D. Go do A, B, C, and D. Or, bully, or you know, figure out what the doctors are telling you. And again, I'm not saying that doctors can't tell you anything. But what is first and foremost the reality? It's believing the words of Christ. Wow. You know why we don't believe the words of Christ? It's because we spend too much time listening to the world. We don't read what he says to us. And if we do read it, we skim over it and we don't stop and think. We look at it more as a um, good luck charm. I'm going to read three chapters today. That ought to help me. And we really don't get anything out of it. Because we're not stopping and saying, what is the truth that I can apply? And the truth here is... Jesus doesn't have to go everywhere because he is everywhere. He is God incarnate. And Jesus was simply wanting to know if this man would actually believe what he said. 
Now, we can take that in our day and age very, very intimately, and we should. When we try to handle everything ourselves, and we try to make things happen, we put God's hand in our life in second place. In fact, sometimes I think we hide it completely. But I'll just say for the sake of congeniality that we just put God in second place when we try to do it all ourselves. Jesus says, your son lives. Now, do you believe that or not? Jesus, you can change the wording and say, you're going to live. Do you believe that or not? Jesus said, I have come to give life and to give it more abundantly. But don't you know, Jesus, we've got to flatten the curve first. Notice what I said. We've got to flatten the curve first. No, we don't. Jesus says, I have come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. John 10, 10. Okay, I'm not making this up. It's where do we put our faith? in prioritization of how we think and act. And this nobleman obviously put his faith first because it says he believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. I'm just telling you what the scriptures say. I'm not making it up. And it happened because of his faith, because of the nobleman's faith. Are we going to be safe because of our faith or because we have done the right things the right way by the world's standards? And again, I'm not saying you shouldn't be precautious. There's no reason to be careless or hazardous in these situations. But is our faith ultimately in Jesus Christ to protect us? And I know that every Christian, I'm not talking to non-Christians, I'm talking to Christians, Every Christian in their heart knows when they're not believing in what Jesus is saying and they're living out of their instincts and out of their fears and out of the propagations and propaganda of the world. And Christians do that. I've done it. <laughs> we all have. So we're not any one of us perfect saints. But we need to encourage each other when we read a passage like this to put our faith in Christ. First and foremost, I've had that opportunity to do that many times, and he has never failed me. Now, the question is, are we going to believe the words of Christ and go and do our lives the way we should? Or are we going to trust in the systems of man? And again, please know that I'm not saying you throw everything out. I'm not taking the balance out of being normally uh, precautious and using common sense in a lot of areas. But are we overdoing it? And is it overcoming our faith? And are we putting our faith in God down a few tiers and saying, well, if I really need it, I'll go to that last. But now, right now, I'm going to do A, B, C, and D. And I'm saying, Jesus has said, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Jesus is saying, I have come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. Jesus is saying your son, your daughter, your family member is healed. Do you want to believe that? I'm not a faith healer. I'm not bouncing anybody on the forehead. Jesus wasn't doing that either. So if you're watching that on television, that isn't it, folks. Okay, got it? That's not it. Jesus is simply speaking his word, and you either believe his word or you don't. And that's the lesson we can pull out of the end of John chapter 4, if we want to read it for what it says. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we come to you through your son, Jesus Christ, and we want to believe his words first and foremost, and we will believe him first and foremost. Teach us to hear the voice of Christ. And to believe that. Teach us to meditate on your word, for it is rich and deep in application for our lives each day. These things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and under his authority we pray. Amen.